Unit 2, Lesson 4, Color Mixtures. Number 1. Here is a diagram showing a mixture of red paint and green paint needed for one batch of a particular shade of brown. Red paint, 3 cups. Green paint, 2 cups. Add to the diagram so that it shows 3 batches of the same shade of brown paint. One batch is represented by three cups of red and two cups of green. So in order to represent three batches, we would simply recreate the three cups of red and two cups of green in all three batches. This represents three batches of the same shade of brown, each batch having three red cups of paint and two green cups of paint. Number two, Diego makes green paint by mixing 10 tablespoons of yellow paint and two tablespoons of blue paint. Which of these mixtures produces the same shade of green paint as Diego's mixture? Select all that apply. He uses 10 tablespoons of yellow paint to two tablespoons of blue paint. But we're looking for a ratio of 10 to two, yellow to blue. A does not work because they have the same ratio, five to one. Five to one is the same as 10 to two. However, they put blue paint first, so A would not work. B, mix tablespoons of blue paint and yellow paint with the ratio of one to five. B would work because they're mixing one tablespoon blue paint and five tablespoons of yellow paint. C, mix tablespoons of yellow paint and blue paint with a ratio of 15 to three. Yellow paint, 15, blue paint, 3. 15 to 3 is the same ratio as 10 to 2. C would also work. D. Mix 11 tablespoons of yellow paint and 3 tablespoons of blue paint. That would not work because the ratio of 11 to 3 is not equivalent to the ratio of 10 to 2. Number 3. To make one batch of blue sky paint, Claire mixes 2 cups of blue paint with 1 gallon of white paint. A. Explain how Claire can make two batches of sky blue paint. Well, one batch of sky blue paint, she mixes two cups of blue paint with one gallon of white paint. So let's just double that to make two batches. In order to make two batches, you just double two cups of blue paint, that would give you four cups, and you double the one gallon of white paint, that gives you two gallons of white. So you would need four cups of blue, two gallons of white. B, explain how to make a mixture that is a darker shade of blue than the sky blue. Increase the ratio of blue paint to white paint. Example, five tablespoons of blue paint to a half a gallon of white paint. C. Explain how to make a mixture that is a lighter shade of blue than the sky blue. Increase the amount of white paint compared to blue paint. Example, a ratio of 5 tablespoons of blue paint to 2 gallons of white paint. Number 4. A smoothie recipe calls for 3 cups of milk, 2 frozen bananas, and 1 tablespoon of chocolate syrup. It's 3 cups of milk, 2 frozen bananas, and 1 tablespoon of chocolate syrup. A. Create a diagram to represent the quantities of each ingredient in the recipe. 3 M's represents 3 cups of milk, 2 B's represents 2 frozen bananas, and 1 C represents 1 tablespoon of chocolate syrup. B. Write three different sentences that use a ratio to describe the recipe. My smoothie recipe has three times the cups of milk than it does tablespoons of chocolate syrup. 2. My smoothie recipe has two times the amount of frozen bananas than it does tablespoons of chocolate syrup. 3. The ratio of milk to frozen bananas to tablespoons of chocolate syrup is three cups of milk to two frozen bananas to one tablespoon of chocolate syrup. Number five, write the missing number under each tick mark on the number line. So we're gonna look for each tick mark. Here's a tick mark with a missing number. Here's a tick mark with a missing number. Here's a tick mark with a missing number. And here's a tick mark with a missing number. From the zero to the six represents six. And this looks like it's about halfway to the six. So what's halfway to the six? Three. So zero plus three is three. Three plus three is six. Six plus three is, is 12. 12 plus three is 15. 15 plus three is 18. And let me fill this one in. Three plus three is six. So we have zero plus three is three. 3 plus 3 is 6, 6 plus 3 is 9, 9 plus 3 is 12, 12 plus 3 is 15, 15 plus 3 is 18. So we have all our tick marks filled in.
Number six, find the area of the parallelogram. Show your reasoning. Let me try it like this. Looks like the length is seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So the length is seven, and the height is one, two, three, and the height is three. So I think that the area is equal to seven times three, which is 21 units squared. 21 units squared. Now I wanna see if I can create a better picture. I wanna take this one and place it right inside there. So now we have something that is one, two, three units tall times one, two, three, four, five, five units long. So the area of this one would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Three times five is fifteen. So we have fifteen square units represented here. We need to now deal with this section here that's left over. So let's take this piece and move it and put it here. So now we have something that's one, two. So we have two by one, two, three, four, five, six. So two by three was six. So if we were to add 15 and six, we would get 21 square units. So I showed you two different ways to find the area of that parallelogram. And both ways showed that the area of the parallelogram was 21 units squared, or 21 square units. Number seven, 11 times 1 fourth equals 11 fourths. And 11 fourths means the same thing as 11 divided by four. How many times does four go into 11? Two, with how many left over? Well, four times two is eight, nine, 10, 11. So that's three left over, four, two and three fourths. So we can write here two and three fourths. B, seven times one fourth fourths, which is the same thing as seven divided by four. How many times does four go into seven? Once with how many left over? Four, five, six, seven. That's three left over, four. So that's gonna be one and three fourths. Seven times one fourth is one and three fourths. C. 13 times 1 27th. 13 times 1 27th. 13 times 1 is 13, and 1 times 27 is 27. 13 over 27. D. 13 times 1 99th. 13 times 1 99 equals 13 over 99. E, X times one over Y. One times X is X, and one times Y is Y. So we have X over Y. And that's true as long as Y does not equal zero. Well there, you've completed unit two, lesson four, color mixtures.